What is good everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Tonight we have your June 26th edition of Smackdown Live Review. <laughs> So SmackDown Live did open up with Miz TV and his guests were the Bludgeon Brothers and he says that they have stuff in common. You know, he says that they both proved how easy it is to dismantle Daniel Bryan. He asked the Bludgeon Brothers why they attacked Daniel Bryan last week. He showed video clips of what happened last week. You know, he he's so money, guys. Miz is so money on the mic. His delivery is just so perfect in my opinion. Uh, he starts talking about a film and he broke down the different acts. He said act one was when Daniel Bryan was getting interviewed by Renee Young and how he challenged the best of the best of SmackDown Live. Act 2 was when they retained their SmackDown Live Tag Team Championships against the club and Daniel Bryan interrupted them during their celebration walking down the aisleway. And then Act 3 was when they destroyed Daniel Bryan. You know, he says that he wants them to join the Miztourage and that he thinks they will be a good team. Then the Bludgeon Brothers, you know, stare down. The Miz get real close. Daniel Bryan would interrupt and come down there. He says, he tells the Miz to shut up and he confronts the Bludgeon Brothers and says that he is not afraid of them and he is not afraid of the Miz and challenges one of them to a matchup and Luke Harper would accept his challenge. Next up, we have our first matchup of the night. Rusev taking on Xavier Woods. This was a solid little matchup. I always enjoy these two in the ring, especially together. Rusev does pick up the win. After the match, Rusev would cut a promo on AJ Styles, saying that he is going to go to his house, break down his door, and take away his championship, and he cannot wait for his match at Extreme Rules, and that it's going to be a good Rusev day. Cut backstage, and we have Jeff Hardy upside down. He cuts a promo saying that he's going to fight and take flight. He's got on neon and blue face paint. Look really, really good. Uh, apparently, Shinsuke Nakamura was not clear to fight in their United States Championship match, so he will be holding an open challenge for the United States Championship. We cut to commercial, and then we come back, and we had Lana and Naomi with some group of chicks for some cast. I didn't know what the hell was going on. Really cringe, really just did not know what was happening. I just, I, I had no idea. Well, I was like, who are these chicks? Why are they here? Yada, yada, yada. The segment ended. Thank God. We come back to the ring, and Sanity comes out to open the United States Challenge, and Eric Young is going to be the one taking on Jeff Hardy. You know, they take on one-on-one -on -one Eric Young taking on Jeff Hardy. There was an ugly botch from Eric Young at one point in the match. It looked like Jeff was going for the twist of fate. But uh, Eric Young, like, messed it up or something like that. It looked very bad. But anyway, there, it was a decent little match. Nothing special. But then the Usos would appear out of the crowd and started to pick a fight with Alexander Wolf and Killian Dane. This led to a DQ after they got in the ring and hit Eric Young. But then it turned into a six-man tag team match between Jeff Hardy and the Usos taking on Sanity. Saw a little matchup. Usos and Hardys pick up the win, which is very surprising to me. I didn't think that Sanity would lose their in-ring debut on the main roster, but they did so I don't know guys that's not good direction for sanity I don't know what they're gonna do like how can you be credible if you can't even beat a random group thrown together so I don't know man that was pretty disheartening for me and I did not expect that come back and we have Becky Lynch taking on Sonya Deville not much of a match you know I really don't care I love Becky Lynch one of my favorite women probably in the entire WWE but she did win this matchup with a disarm her. I think the match ended with Sonya Deville went to Mandy Rose trying to get like her to cheat to help her win or something. And then Becky would catch her off guard, lock in the disarm her, and win the matchup. Thank God. I feel like Becky's been on a string of wins. Now we just got to get some gold around her. Maybe her versus Asuka at SummerSlam. That's good money. Come back stage and we have Andrade seeing almost doing one of those Facebook Live interview type deals with Selena Vega. They send a message to the SmackDown locker room to stay out of their way. You know, they've been feuding with Sin Cara, but they beat up Sin Cara and I guess they're trying to put everybody on notice that they are here. Cut to backstage and we have James Ellsworth trying on his mask. He bumps into Ty Dillinger who we haven't seen on television for like a year and a half. But Ty Dillinger calls him, you know, a 10 with the mask on and then he's like, no, I'm a 10 with the mask off, you know? And he was like, nah, bro, you're a 1. So he disses on him. James Ellsworth comes out to the ring. He challenges Asuka to a match. Says he wasn't ready last week, but he's ready this week and telling her to, him, her to come on out. Out comes the general manager of SmackDown Live, Paige. She says, James, what are you doing? You were just backstage asking everybody if Asuka was here. And when you found out she wasn't here, you came out and, you know, tried to make yourself look tough by challenging Asuka, knowing she would not show up because she's in Japan with her family. She does announce that Carmella will defend her SmackDown Live Championship at Extreme Rules against Asuka. James says that Paige isn't just there to do that. She's there to ask him on a date. Paige accepts the date and says, yes, you're right. We have a date next Tuesday. But she changes it to a match between James Ellsworth and Asuka. 
next week instead. And for our main event, we had Daniel Bryan taking on Luke Harper in a singles match. You know, a solid match back and forth. Both of these guys know how to work a ring, especially Daniel Bryan. Obviously, Luke Harper very underrated in that department. At ringside would be Eric Rowan. You know, these guys had a lot of good back and forth. Daniel Bryan would, in fact, lock in the yes lock. It looked like Luke Harper was about to tap out, and then Eric Rowan jumps in and jumps on Daniel Bryan. Another main event this week ended by a disqualification. So Daniel Bryan does pick up the win due to disqualification, and the Bludgeon Brothers would go on to beat down on Daniel Bryan, and then Kane's music hits, and Kane is back. Uh, I don't think anybody's really excited for it, but the crowd sure was. You know, Kane comes out, and he helps fend off the Bludgeon Brothers, and they beat up on the Bludgeon Brothers. They disappear, and Daniel Bryan looks so confused. He was like, what in the hell is going on? Kane opens his arms up to Daniel Bryan, you know, saying to bring it in for a hug. Daniel Bryan was very, you know, hesitant at first, you know, walking around the ring, whatever, and then he would go in and hug Kane, and the crowd was going crazy. Everybody was going crazy. The general manager, Paige, would come out and say that this, I cannot let this slip through my fingers. Team Hell No will face the Bludgeon Brothers at Extreme Rules for the SmackDown Live Tag Titles. So I don't know why they rushed that so fast. I believe there's a few weeks left until Extreme Rules, so I don't know why you know, she had to come out there right then and make this match happen, but uh, that's what we're getting. Team Hell No in 2018, we have a decrepit old AF Kane and Daniel Bryan going head-to-head -head with the Bludgeon Brothers for the SmackDown Live titles at Extreme Rules. So I don't even know what's going on, but Kane is back. Team Hell No apparently reuniting, and apparently Daniel Bryan's headed to the tag division. So, uh, yeah. And that was pretty much your SmackDown Live, guys. Thank you so much for watching. A lot better show than Monday Night Raw, in my opinion, even though it wasn't that much better. Uh, not, not my favorite show by far, but uh, better than Monday Night Raw. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE and WWE figure-related videos. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.